Good morning and greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from Diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. Our number on the bright side, 844-236-6010. We love hearing from you at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side, 844-236-6010. If you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible at 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, please go to our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can order products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team off our websites as well. Brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. We've got news stories, blog posts, videos, lots of free health information, good health information at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Com, and you can click on the Join the Team link if you want to sign up and join the Brightside Ben team. Start yourself a longevity business. If you're an entrepreneur, if you want to work out, of, work out of your home, if you want supplemental income, or if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price for a one-time $25 fee, you can become a distributor. Click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the Brightside Ben team, a Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. 2470. You can order Longevity products or sign up right off the uh, by calling 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. And I'd also like to remind you to check out our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com, our Truth Retinol 5% gel made with retinol and vitamin C and our transdermal delivery matrix, and that's it. Our TDM, retinol, and fat-soluble vitamin C. That's all you're getting. And our Truth Transdermal C-Balm, you're getting vitamin C and our uh, transdermal delivery matrix, no preservatives, no fragrances, no fillers, no waxes in any of our truth treatment products. Our truth transdermal C serum voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar magazine. If you want a active skin softening, anti-aging topical skin, pro topical skincare product with no preservatives, no fillers, no nothing that your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. You really want to check out our truth treatment products. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, we are talking about cortisol, stress management hormone. When I, when I think of cortisol, I think of stress management. And I also think of cholesterol. Cholesterol being, uh, cortisol being a form of cholesterol, a, a metabolite is the fancy schmancy chemical designation. It's a breakdown product or a derivative, I should say, of uh, cholesterol. Just highlights the importance of cholesterol. Cortisol is cholesterol. Vitamin D is cholesterol. Bile is cholesterol. Estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, DHEA, these are all versions of cholesterol. Cholesterol is undoubtedly the single most important molecule in your body. Now, you can make a case for insulin, and you can probably make a case for other chemicals in the body, but you know what? In my mind, for all the various things cholesterol does, it's at least 
one of, but I say the most important molecule in the body. And the boneheaded medical strategy of compelling your body to make less of this stuff is just idiotic beyond belief. Unbelievably idiotic. As far as cortisol goes, cortisol is designed by nature to get us out of a jam. But when it's chronically elevated, it can be linked to every single progressive degenerative disease you can name. In fact, there's no such thing as a degenerative disease that does not have some element of chronically elevated cortisol. That's why it's the third point on our triangle of disease. It's a classic uh, uh, chronic exposure to cortisol is a classic cause of hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism being an epidemic. On our last Bright Side episode, we talked about the power of paying attention, technically called mindfulness for lowering cortisol. Mindfulness is basically just watching. Being mindful is just paying attention. I think it's pretty amazing that mindfulness is uh, such a powerful medical strategy for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's just crazy. It's, it just mo- blows me away that we have all these medical strategies, these drugs and these surgical procedures and these devices and all of these tools of the, of the, of the medical trade. And it's just simply paying attention it can lower your, bro- lower your blood pressure. It can increase your fertility. It can improve your sleep. It can reduce anxiety. It can reduce the likelihood of heart disease. It can improve your mood. It acts as an antidepressant. Something as simple as paying attention, just being present, can have such a profound and scientifically valid and scientifically verified effect on our health. It shows us how powerful non-medical strategies can be. That's the underlying message on this pro- uh, of this program. Health is simple. You don't need a doctor. Health is simple. You don't need a doctor. Unless you have, of course, some kind of, cert- some kind of emergency, and then you need a doctor, and praise God for the doctors, when you have a medical emergency. But for the vast majority of our health challenges, they're not medical. It, it, cortisol is the jumping off point to all of these chronic degenerative diseases, and something as simple as paying attention can lower your cortisol. You can lower your cortisol just by watching your breath. That means watching your breath is one of the best antihypertensive medications you could use, non-toxic. You can lower your cortisol by watching your thoughts. You can lower your cortisol while you're washing the dishes. You can use dishwashing as a cortisol-lowering medical, non-medical protocol. According to the book Mastering Mindfulness by Kim Davies, she talks about uh, reconfiguring, this is a quote here, you can re- reconfigure your feelings of, about any activity by changing the name of it. Instead of doing the dishes, do the, quote, doing the dishes meditation, unquote. You can, use, you can use doing the dishes. And by the way, mindfulness and meditation are not exactly the same, but they're similar. So you can lower your cortisol if you just pay attention to your hands, how they feel in the soapy water while you're washing the dishes. These are all things we could do to lower our blood pressure without a beta blocker, without a doctor. These are all things that we could do to improve our fertility, improve our creativity, reduce our uh, susceptibility to diseases, improve our immune system without having to go to a doctor, without having to use drugs. This link between health and mindfulness also points to another interesting fact, and that is the connection between non-mindfulness and disease. If mindfulness lowers cortisol, non-mindfulness can be a cause of elevated cortisol, not paying attention, living a a a non-mindful life, which is most of how most of us live our lives, living a reactive life where... We're in this constant reactivity, this constant reaction mode, like a fish biting at a worm. When an event happens, we react, we jump, for better or worse. Imagine how much easier our lives would be if we watched and paid attention, if we watched and paid attention before we reacted. Now, of course, sometimes you have to react, obviously, without pausing. If a car is about to hit you, if a mugger jumps out of a back alley. But these kinds of events are relatively rare. For the most part, we're in reactive mode when the phone rings or when we have a yucky thought, or when we look in our rear view mirrors, we're motoring down the highway and we see a police car in the back, in the rear view mirror. Can you imagine seeing a police car in the rear view mirror and instead of just reacting, instead of your heart rate getting, uh, 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 going, I- increasing, your blood pressure going up, imagine if you see that police car in the rear view mirror and then you just pause and you watch and you be curious instead of freaking out. The next time your phone rings, the next time you get a text message, Try to relax before you pick up the phone. Try to watch your breath for a second or two before you answer the phone or before you check out who's, uh, who's sending you the text message. And speaking of the iPhone, you can actually use your, or the smartphone, you can actually use your smartphone to improve mindfulness. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. You can also purchase your favorite longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off pharmacistben.com, brightsideben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Or you can call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 for more information. So mindfulness, meditation, paying attention, all of these are wonderful non-medical strategies, non-toxic strategies for dealing with uh, health challenges. Why is it that we automatically think drugs when we're not healthy? Why is it that we automatically think doctor when we're not healthy? Why is it that we don't turn to the little things? Like how we live our lives, how we live our lives from a paying attention standpoint, how we eat, the kind of foods we eat, how we exercise. These are the little things that we can do ourselves. I find this so powerful and liberating. It liberates us from the tyranny of the medical model that at every turn wants to insinuate itself into our lives. It's just not fair. It's dirty pool. It's not right. Is there a place for doctors? Yes. There's a place for doctors. Doctor, by the way, comes from the word doctrine. Doctor means to teach. A true doctor is a teacher. A true doctor is not a, not, not a drug pusher. A true doctor is a teacher. To teach, uh, he, he or she teaches the patient how to be healthy without him or her. The job of a good, I've always said this, the job of a good health, healthcare professional is to make themselves irrelevant. The job of a good healthcare professional is to get, that, get the heck out of the way, show the patient what to do, and then leave. The, one of these days, I'm not going to be necessary. I understand that. And that's a good thing. When doctors aren't necessary anymore, they could do real work, like drywall or, or, or building something. Doctoring, this idea of going back and back to the doctor every month, every two months, every three months, and not getting better is craziness. You wouldn't do that with any other profession. You would never do that with your plumber. Oh, I can't fix your toilet, Mrs. Jones, but I'm going to come back every month just to check, to make sure I can't fix it. Uh, you go to your car, you go to your mechanic. He says, I can't do anything for your car, but I need to see that car every month, every two months. We wouldn't do it with any other profession except the medical profession. We give up when it comes to our bodies. So taking advantage of the little things. Mindfulness, paying attention. If you have a smartphone, there's all kinds of apps you can use, you can get now that will help you, that can train you in paying attention. And paying attention actually is a, like a muscle. It requires a certain training. It requires training. It requires exercise because we're always in reactive mode because our ancestors were the descendants of ancestors who were reactive, who survived by being reactive. So we tend to react. We don't stop and pause and breathe. Get yourself an app called Insight Timer if you have a smartphone. Or another one called Aura. These are kind of meditation apps, A-U-R-A, -A, Aura. Another one called Omvana, O-M-V-A-N-A. -A. That one is, uh, was founded by a guy named Vishen Lakhiani. Some of you guys may have heard of him. And this is a young kid. He's in his 30s. And I started watching his, his uh, he, he started doing YouTube videos 10 years ago when he was in his 20s. And he just, he, he's, he's a young kid, but man, he's got some great ideas. Vishen Lakhiani, he says his name, I believe. Anyway, he's got an app called Omvana, O-M-V-A-N-A. -A. Another one called Stop, Breathe, and that's my favorite one. Stop, Breathe, and Think. Stop, Breathe, and Think. It's a great, just, just remember those, Stop, Breathe, and Think. Uh, uh, there's 30 free sessions on this Stop, Breathe, and Think app, all available from the comfort of your own smartphone. So mindfulness lowers cortisol, and because it's cortisol that causes our blood pressure to go up, that keeps us from sleeping, or uh, keeps us from making babies, or thinking creatively, creatively, it's cortisol that causes constipation, it activates aggression and fear centers, the amygdala in the brain is activated by cortisol. All that means that mindfulness and lowering cortisol are the best antihypertensive, sleeping pill, fertility medication, brain tool, fear and anxiety. Uh, anti-fear and anxiety agent, all rolled into one cortisol-lowering strategy. Paying attention, mindfulness, breathing. One of the most uh, important sources of cortisol, interestingly, is your doctor. Medication, your pharmacist, prednisone is a, a major source of exposure to cortisol. Oh, I don't take prednisone. Yes, you do if you're drinking the water. Remember, all these drugs are in our water. So prednisone... Uh, <laughs> 
you know, in the water. But even there's a lot of people taking prednisone for months and for years. There are people who are on prednisone for years. In pharmacy 101, you never stay on steroid hormones for a long period of time. But yet there's still people on preps. Probably some of you out there listening, either yourselves or, or people you know, are on prednisone for years. Or methylprednisolone, that's another cortisone-like drug. Or dexamethasone, that's another one. And then a particularly nasty form of cortisol, which has actually got fluorine attached to it. We spent a couple of weeks um, at the end of the year last year talking about how toxic, how deadly fluoride is. So now you've got a drug called fludrocortisone. It's also known as Florinef. That's the brand name. It's not dispensed all that much, but it's still dispensed. And that's cortisol plus fluoride. As if cortisol wasn't deadly enough in a medication, now you've got fluoride too. Uh, to be fair... Cortisol is an anti-inflammatory. That's one of its main roles in the body is to keep inflammation down. So cortisol has anti-inflammatory properties. And if you're in miserable pain, you may want an anti-inflammatory. So, so cortisol has a role to play as a medication. It's this dependence on it, that it that, where we run into a problem. It's when we stay on this stuff long term instead of figuring out what's the problem, what's the cause. And skin is the worst, the dermatologist's office is one of the worst offenders of these, steroid, these uh, steroidal medications. If you've heard the term steroid medication, for the most part, you're talking about cortisol or a cortisol analog. And dermatology is filled with these things. Dermatology is cr a really crazy medical profession, by the way. The same, it's, you know, I don't want to say it's useless, but it's pretty close to useless. The protocols used for treating skin and skin conditions, eczema, psoriasis, rashes, itchiness, acne, the protocols for treating skin and skin conditions have not changed in 70 years. It's still almost exclusively antibiotics, steroids, and retinoids. Retinoids came a little bit later, but antibiotics, steroids, and retinoids, that's the bulk of your dermatological pharmacology. Of, dermatol of, of skin care pharmacology hasn't changed. And steroids are a mainstay because steroids quell inf inflammation and the skin is tremendously prone towards inflammation when there is toxicity or there's, there's allergenicity or there's something going wrong with the immune system in the blood. So rashes are very common. So betamethasone and triamcinolone, these are, those are the two big ones, betamethasone and triamcinolone. You probably heard those if you have any skin condition. They're the go-to meds for all skin conditions, except maybe acne. They don't, they don't use steroids for acne, although acne is an inflammatory condition. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure exactly why they don't use steroids for, I, don't, I guess they haven't thought of it that way, but you know, if you're going to go drugs, you might as well use a steroid if you're going to go anti-inflammatory. Not that I'm promoting anti-inflammatory steroids for any skin condition, but if you're absolutely miserable, sometimes they can be helpful in the short run. So chronic exposure to cortisol is behind many, if not all, of our health challenges, and you can begin to see what using cortisol as a medication or living with chronic exposure to cortisol, can, how it can wreak havoc on our bodily health, and even more importantly, how powerful lowering cortisol can be to restoring our body back to health. There's lots of ways to lower cortisol, and there's also, we talked about some of them, mindfulness is certainly one of the most important, but there's also nutritional supplements you could use to help balance out cortisol. We'll talk about those. Uh, we'll probably talk about those a little bit when we come back from our break, and then we'll talk about them a lot in the coming Bright Side episodes. Okay, we are back on the Bright Side, and we do have lines open at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, lowering cortisol levels, if you have a health challenge that involves cortisol, if you have any health challenge that you want to help dealing with, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you have a comment or success story, we all love hearing success stories on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you. We'll get your calls here in just a sec, so hang tight if you're on hold. Oh, yeah, I told you, told you I'd, uh, I'd give you some nutritional tips. There's, there's quite a few nutritional supplements. Generally speaking, if something is going to help build your body, it's going to support your, it's going to help balance out the effects of cortisol. It may not balance out cortisol directly, but it'll balance out some of the negative effects. One of the most important of the negative effects of cortisol is the long-term deterioration of the body, specifically the connective tissue. Over the course of time, the body will shrivel up in response to cortisol. Now, with age, we all know that's one of the things that happens. We shrivel up. And in large part, that's because of elevated cortisol, which means 
as you're getting older, and if you're especially if you're elderly, like in your 70s or 80s, I don't know where elderly, where the age, where the term elderly begins to apply, but somewhere in the 70s or 80s, and you want, don't want to shrivel up, or you're noticing you're shriveling up, everything we're talking about here today that, to help balance out your cortisol, including mindfulness, can be your best friend, can be your best anti-aging friend. Many of the signs of aging, the, the obvious and visible signs of aging, the shrinking and the shriveling, that actually uh, that occurs in the skin as much as it occurs anywhere else. The skin shrinks and shrivels. That's what wrinkles are. All of that stuff can be related to cortisol, and lowering your cortisol can be one of the best anti-aging strategies you ever use. Vitamin D is a powerful way. Using vitamin D is, it can be a powerful way to help balance out cortisol. Vitamin D is a building vitamin. It's a summertime vitamin. It, tol it, it, tell it tells the body that it's time to build. Vitamin D, when you think about it, is a summertime vitamin in the sense that it's, it, it's created in the skin in response to the sun, especially summertime sun. So vitamin D's main role in life, its main purpose in our bodies, is to grow and build and convert food into a body. Converting food into body requires a lot of chemistry. You know, you think about it. You eat lunch and it becomes you the next day or two days later or three days later. That's a pretty remarkable phenomenon. We are yesterday's lunch. And so in order for that to occur, well, there's got to be a lot of appropriate chemistry. Vitamin D facilitates all that chemistry. Cortisol suppresses all that chemistry, by the way. And this makes vitamin D a very important anti-cortisol supplement. And getting out in the sun, by the way, because that's really the best vitamin D is the kind we get from the sun, is a wonderful anti-cortisol strategy, getting a little bit of sun every day. Using, and by the way, the sun actually turns the cholesterol into vitamin D. It's like this magical, the, the photonic rays, specifically the ultraviolet rays, the, what they call UVB rays, which are also so associated with burning, these UVB rays magically activate cholesterol. And that's all I'm going to say because that's an amazing, amazing thing. The sun magically turns on cholesterol. They say it activates it, but I call it magic. It electrifies it somehow and turns it into vitamin D. That's amazing right there, folks. And it's a great strategy for lowering your cortisol. All right. Let me read a couple stories here real quick, and then we'll get your calls, 844-236-6010. And we do have lines open for you. I think this is really interesting. This is about cortisol from the Clinical Endocrinology Journal, March 2006. Associations between liver histology, that is uh, liver cells, and cortisol secretion in people and subjects with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. They call it NAFLD. It affects millions, maybe 100 million Americans have NAFLD. If you've been diagnosed with it, get onto my website, brightsidehealth.com, and start taking Bergamax right away. Bergamax is an amazing way, a powerful way to help, uh, help support liver health if you're dealing with NAFLD, even if you're not, just to support liver health. I don't talk about Brightside Health that much, but there's some really cool products at brightsidehealth.com, including our Bergamax for NAFLD. In any case, conclusions uh, from this article. NAFLD patients have subtle chronic overactivity in what's called the HPA axis. Don't want to get into that, but that basically means too much cortisol. There is a major relationship between fatty liver disease and elevated cortisol. That means if you're one of the 100 million Americans who's dealing with NAFLD, relax. Get out in the sun. Use vitamin D. Make sure you're doing every. Be mindful. Pay attention. Everything you could do to lower your cortisol. All right, let me do one more, and then we'll get your call. It's 844-236-6010. Uh, this is from Dermatology News. Just came out, actually, a couple days ago. Topical steroid reduces atopic dermatitis relapse in children. Atopic dermatitis is a fancy-schmancy way of saying eczema, rashiness. Topical steroid reduces rashiness relapse in children. Well, yeah, it does, because the, the, horma, the chemistry that causes the rash can be suppressed by steroids, by cortisol. But that doesn't mean it's a good strategy. Kids, who, kids should never have rashes. And by the way, while we're on the subject, skin should never be sensitive. Do you know that skin should never be sensitive? It's designed to not be sensitive. I guarantee there's probably five out of 10 people listening to this program that think that they have sensitive skin. They, they do have sensitive skin. I don't think they have, they do have sensitive skin. But skin should not be sensitive. And skin should not be rashy. And kids should never have eczema. If kids have eczema, you can rest assured 
they're doing drink they're drinking too much milk or gluten intolerance or some kind of digestive health issue legumes peanuts i talked to a lady a couple days ago and she couldn't figure out why her kid has this terrible acne and she told me every night he's an athlete the kids in high school terrible acne she says every night she makes him a peanut butter milkshake and she couldn't figure out why this kid has acne i'm like peanut butter peanuts are one of the most acne causing things that a kid could eat and dairy is maybe the most acne causing thing a kid could eat and she was making a peanut butter milkshakes and couldn't figure out why he had acne now i'm not beating up on this lady but i'm just saying this is the kind of misunderstanding we have about the body she i guarantee you if, if i didn't hadn't talked to her she would have been the kid would have been on accutane and the, the dermatologist and the pharmacist would have been all too happy to put him put the kid on it especially the, well i don't want to beat up on any individuals but this it's how the model works so topical steroid reduces atopic dermatitis relapse in children Great. That doesn't help us. If you have a kid has eczema, atopic dermatitis, focus on food. Get the kid on vitamin E. Get the kid on vitamin A. Get the kid on zinc. Depending on how old he is. You know, if it's a baby, not necessarily. But uh, by the time a kid is like a ten, a, a eight, nine, ten years old, they're burning through nutrients. If they're not getting nutrients in food, and many of them are not, they're burning through nutrients. That means they're very likely going to be deficient in zinc, which is, uh, uh, can be a, a major cause or, or reason why, I don't say cause, but involved in the formation of rashes. Zinc is a, one of the skin's most important minerals. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Elaine real quick, and then we'll have to hold, hold you over, Elaine. What's going on hey, good in Alaska? How, hey, how's good it going in Alaska? Really well. We're doing great up here. Yeah, yeah. We're going to come up, so... Days, days are getting longer. Is, I love it. So when you say the days are getting longer, now you have like four hours of daylight or something, five hours of daylight? No, no. Actually, I'm watching the sunrise right now, and it's just before 8 o'clock here, and, and then it's okay. about 6. So about 10 hours. Okay, okay. I, so when, what's with the days like only being an hour and two hours of sunshine and that kind of thing? It, it, no, 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 no. It's not that different from Colorado. It's really not. Okay. All right. Well, I, I learned something. I, I always learn something when I do this program. Hang on, Elaine. We'll finish up when we come back, okay? you got to take a break. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back on the bright side right after this. On the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Elaine in Alaska. Good morning. What's going on today, Elaine? Yes, good morning. I um, I have a question for my my father-in-law. I tried to get, I, you guys just did a talk. Are you underwater over there in Alaska? You're sounding all funny. Oh, how's that sound? Uh, oh, okay. You're fading in and out, and I, it's, it's kind of weird. Tell me what you were going to ask, and then I'm going to have to let you go, I think. Yeah. Let's try. Yeah. Uh, basically, my father-in-law, he has, um, he thought he was having a heart attack. Okay. With his heart, everything, his heart was fine. Okay. But what he was diagnosed with was a hiatal hernia. Oh, okay. Does he, have, did he, he doesn't have a history of uh, reflux or digestive things? He, he does. I think he does have a, have a history of that. So uh, That's usually what it's associated. How old is he, by the way? 77. Okay. And this is the first time he's had, he noticed that he had a hiatal hernia? I, I believe this That's was great. A, That's great. That's yeah. great. Uh, do you know what a hiatal hernia is? Where the, the, the diaphragm yeah. kind of pokes, pokes through, pokes uh, through the, or the stomach kind of pokes through the diaphragm? Right, right. Yeah. So it can cause all kinds, of, you know, the stomach is, is where the food sits. And if it's kind of divided with a little, you, know, you can just picture your stomach divided. That's not a good thing. And, and acid can splash back up, and di digestion can be impaired. I mean, it could be pretty darn miserable. Uh, I'm surprised he hadn't noticed that he had it. Uh, all herniations should be regarded as deterioration of connective tissue. Hernia, uh, umbilical hernias, abdominal hernias, inguinal hernias, hiatal hernias, a hernia, uh, a herniated disc in your spine. Herniated herniations are deterioration of connective tissue. The, you, I know you know that. You're a connective tissue expert. Elaine, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you just got to build the connective tissue. I mean, I say just. It, it, it's, it's a lot of stuff you got to do, but that's what you want to be doing. There's nothing okay. medicine can do for the hiatal hernia. And he's wrapping his brain around the concept that he, he knows he needs to change the way he eats. He's never really had... To Not necessarily. 
Not necessarily. Let me explain what I mean. He's 77, right? Mm -hmm. He's been living a certain way for 77 years. He's doing all right. He's, you know, he, I don't know. He's okay. He's surviving. Uh, mm -hmm. He's functional. Maybe he doesn't want to change. I'm always hesitant to change somebody's life, period. But especially when you get to be 77 or 87, not everybody wants to change, you know? Right. So, you know, let, let him be. Let him live the rest of his life. I would if, he does, if it doesn't concern him. But it can be... It can be kind of miserable if he if he's got the splash the reflux. It can be kind of miserable, and he, then that's when you really want to start paying attention to it because there's nothing medicine can do for you except give you antacids, which make things worse. Right. All right, I want to get a couple more calls in Elaine. Does that help? Glucogel caps. You want some products? Bone broth, bone broth protein, glucogel caps, uh, zinc, uh, anything with uh, anything with uh, uh, the amino acids for building cartilage. Things like. Uh, uh, um, eggs and fish and organ meats, um, stomach acid will help him digest and process some of these nutrients if he doesn't have enough stomach acid. So make sure he does apple cider vinegar with his meals. He may not want to if he's got reflux issues, yeah. but uh, he does need st he does need stomach acid. Uh, probiotics, right. nightly essence can be very helpful. A lot of times the pressure, the, the, the upward pressure that causes the reflux starts off at the intestinal level where the bacteria are if there's issues there. So making sure he's using uh, uh, the nightly essence on a regular basis, that might help. Fucoid Z might help as well. I would use high aluronic acid supplements. I always have to say that slowly. High aluronic acid supplements, great for building connective tissue, gelatin, um, and also, uh, also liquid silica gel, very underappreciated connective tissue building nutrient. All would, right. it be okay, yeah. would it be okay to take the BTP? Heck yeah. Uh, uh, um, yeah, small doses. You're going to have to see because I would do t a teaspoon in water. Sometimes the BTT can be a little hard on folks who are, have, that, have a reflux issue, but, right. you, but just, you'll just have to see, small doses. Okay. Okie doke. Right. Have a great day. Bye, okay. Elaine. Bye. Bye. Okay, Rick in California, good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side. What's up, Rick? Good morning, Ben. I had talked with you yesterday right at the end of the program. I had been having some chest pains. I'm 59. Oh, the beta, they put you on the beta blocker. Is that you? Kind of put me on the beta blocker, the Toprol, and I don't have – all the indicators came back negative as far as artery problems, anything. They couldn't find a thing except for I had a little bit of hyperthyroidism. Oh, you were, an, you were athletic. And, you were right. telling me you were an athlete. How old are you again? 70? Did you tell me? 59. How old? 59. A uh, 59. Okay. All right. So uh, if you got hypo, if you're hypothyroid, that means you're probably dealing with a little bit of elevated cortisol, and it's not surprising considering you're so athletic. This is a this is something that you, a lot of a lot of athletes don't realize. Athletics and sports will drive up your cortisol, and if you're constantly doing it, and you're not giving your body a break, and this is a, a very common. You know, when you get when you exercise, you get a little high, so it's easy to get addicted to it. But from a physiologic perspective, the body doesn't want to be constantly exercising. Does that make sense? So you, you, right. You, so you could be dealing with that. Now, that, yeah. would, cause the, that would cause the heart, the elevated heart rate. Did you say it was elevated heart rate or you had occlusion? What were they doing with the beta blocker? Remind me. That, that was just for the chest pain. My Chest pain, my, that's right. Um, the pressure's great and my, my I'm heart I'm guessing rate. you're getting, there's something going on there. And it could has very well have to do with the elevated cortisol. Now, the elevated cortisol might also be due to psychological things, too. If you're like an athlete, type A athlete, and you're constantly working out, and you're constantly running, I think, I'm, I'm remembering you said that you were like a marathon runner, or you're constantly running. Uh, biker. Biker, Water. okay. Biking, you a lot of walking. You may very well be psychologically prone to producing cort more cortisol, too, in addition to physiologic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, does that sound like it could be you? Yes, and I, I do a number of things just in general that I do as far as health-wise to build connective tissue. You know what I mean? There's a lot of things that I... I know, but listen, cortisol is anti-connective tissue. So if you're building up the... You say, well, exercise is pro-connective tissue, and cortisol is anti-connective tissue, and I just said exercise can drive your cortisol up too much without rest. I call it exorest. It's not really exercise that you want to maximize your health and strength and improve connective tissue and all the good things that come with exercise. It's exorest. Why? Because the rest period is when your muscles grow. And it's when your connective tissue grows. Your connective tissue is not growing when you're biking, uh, uh, Rick. When you're biking, okay. it's breaking down. You understand okay. what I'm saying? It's growing the next day when you're sitting on your butt watching TV. Right. You get it? If you never get that break, then or you don't get enough of that break, then you're not getting the benefits, the building benefits, and you're actually causing more harm than good. Yeah. So if so you're used, 
if you're using your exercise to get high with, and that's one thing, you know, I'm, you know, I can understand there is that high aspect to it. But if you're using it to build, then you got to exercise, not exercise. Okay. So what makes sense? The, for all, I mean, he's the he's the cardiologist, but I don't really want to put beta blockers into my body. I don't blame you. I wouldn't even want to. When I was dispensing them, I would wear. I wouldn't even want to smell them. I'd either turn my head away or I'd wear a mask. They're nasty, nasty drugs. There's no getting around that. They're nasty drugs among the nastiest beta blockers. I just, with them, I just I have a, a certain you know concern you know as far as taking it. And if he says you know you still need to, you're, take you're it. the boss. He's not the boss. Number one, you do whatever you want to do. Number two, you want to correct the problem. If you just say I'm not going to take the beta blocker, don't correct the problem. Well, you know the beta blocker, as toxic as it is, is keeping you in the game. You know I, I don't think right. you should take it. I'm not a believer in it, but if you're going to live, if you're going to not take care of the problem, now I don't know what the problem is, because I only know that you're a, 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 a biker, an, an intense biker, I think, what did you say, 50 miles a week, something crazy, what did you say? Uh, I, well, the last couple of years, I did 7,000 miles, so. What does that come out to? That's a lot of miles, that's a, that's a hundred and plus, that's a hundred plus miles a, a week. A days when I'm riding to 50 miles a day. Okay, so that could be a st- tremendous burden on the body. After you work out, after you bike, Get your, and actually, not even while you're biking or before you go out and bike, but certainly after, do all your cortisol-lowering nutrients, too. Vitamin D, oh. vitamin E, vitamin A. Make sure you're doing enough protein. And this is a lot of things. Your body is under a lot of stress for a 59-year-old guy, and that could be a good thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but you got to be smart about it. You, gotta, okay. if you, you know what I'm saying? you got to take yeah. care. At, leverage the rest period. It's so important. Leverage the rest period. I think it's so cool that the body builds when it rests. You know, and the skin is the same way, by been, the way. There's, uh, go ahead. I haven't been biking near as much since I experienced these chest pains. I I'm sure. My, I'm sure that made you relax. Body has a way of, of like compelling you to relax, right? You don't, want, right? you don't want to do that. The body will whisper, whisper. The body's very subtle at first. It's the still small voice, but then it yells, and you don't want the body yelling at you. There, it, it, it gets ugly, you know? So you want to catch it early, and, and you are catching it kind of early here. Uh, you know, not as bad as it could, it could have been if you didn't call us now, if you waited a year. So so lighten up a little bit, relax, take advantage of the rest period, make sure you're doing your your cortisol balancing nutrients. I'm guessing that's where your problem is. Have you had a cortisol checked at all? Not that I'm aware. Maybe my complete blood panel. That Any is- issues with sleep? Any issues? Do you sleep good at night? Do you sleep, uh, go right to sleep? I don't, I, there's no way you go right to sleep. You can't. Not usually, I don't. Yeah, no. you can't. Yeah, you can't. Right, that's where your problem is, my friend. I'm out of time, Rick. Thanks so much okay. for your call. Appreciate it. I hope I helped you out. Okay, and that's it for the bright side today. Take care, man. Good luck. That's Goodbye. it for the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products, and then truthtreatments.com for all our Truth Skin Health products. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.